Hello, and welcome to the Film for Thought podcast. First rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. You can't handle the truth! We named the dog in here. On Wednesdays, we were pink. You talking to me? Yes, this is the Film for Thought podcast live on Blast Media at UWL. This week on the show, our palms are sweaty, jokes week, hosts are heavy. It's music week and we'll be talking the best in music in films. Not musicals, that's another week entirely. Excited for that week. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm your host, Connor Mulgrew. Joining me as always is my co-host, Jake Mulgrew. Hello. Uh, Our producer, Katie Weeter. Say hello, Katie. You have to say, say hello. You always Katie. say that when she's not on mic. Why are you doing this to me? Hello. <laughs> I just like making you speak. It's funny. And our esteemed guest, esteemed. Mr. Jay Phillips, representing the students' union. Hello. How are representing you doing, the students' union is all on how, your shoulders. How are you we, doing? We all today, work at the students' union. Jay. We do all work at the students' union. Okay. At the, well, so, like, as always, if you'd like to join in the conversation with us this week, you can reach us at FFT underscore podcast that's right we have yeah. our own twitter now we have a twitter so it's you don't official. Have to we're a big us. deal the name film for thought was taken yeah it was yeah. It, literally <laughs> every out... variation was taken that's yeah. why we ended up with fft underscore podcast but you get the idea yeah so you can find us there from now on using the hashtag fft on blast if you'd like you don't need to now though because we have our own we have, twitter yeah, handle we have a twitter handle we're kind of a big deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thank you, Katie. She's on point if you decide that you can't stay all night, or if you decide that you'd rather resort to alcohol on this lovely Friday evening than listening to us <laughs> ramble on, you don't have to worry. We have you covered. You can join us at, on YouTube at 6pm on Saturday. Just search for Film for Thought and look for the blue camera. It's actually a white camera on it a blue background. It is a white camera on a blue background. I should probably you know, change that in my notes next time because <laughs> I'm just reading off of notes here. That's it. By the way, spoiler alert, we don't have any production value. I'm reading notes off of a phone for this intro. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're struggling this week. We've had some technical problems so we we're have. both doing our notes off our phones this week. Yeah, we are. Which is okay, great. so first we're going to go to the newsroom but before we do, I have something I'd like to address. Ooh. We're proud to be UWL's first and last stop for Film for That and And only. At Film for Thought. And we look forward to us growing our network so that we can provide you with more high-quality content on a weekly basis. In future, we'd like to be able to bring you exclusive news and looks at some of the newest and best content from the red carpet and beyond, but to do that, we're going to need your support. It doesn't take much, just as little as a like or a share on Facebook, and now I, st- I did write hopefully, but it says opfully, uh, <laughs> together we can take this show to greater places. I would Thank love you, to, I would... and now to Jake for the news. I would love to see some more people getting on getting engaged and getting uh, the excited more, about the show the more engagement we have on this show the more we can do as far as addressing sponsors and potential special guests yeah uh, it, so basically the way industry, it works, special guest? Such, <laughs> you are you are a very special guest you are a special esteemed. guest esteemed. every guest is a special guest but we want some but famous we want industry ones. guests <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. yeah um no but like i think i think the thing to note is like we want to do better things we want to be able to like go and interview people at red carpets and stuff yeah, we, we can only do that if you guys join in so give us a like we, we want those microphones share. with with the little <laughs> with our branding the on, ed- on the outside except we want it with a little blue camera or a white camera on a blue <laughs> background <laughs> okay so news so to the news that's yeah. what we do yeah so yeah. for the if you're listening for the first time uh we we uh do this segment it's called the newsroom uh, we're gonna get some sound effects and stuff. Jeff out, Daniels. So that we... <laughs> that's a, a joke we will joke, never stop making. Uh, that we made in the first show, and it will carry on until the day I die. Um, that was dark. <laughs> we start with the box office every week, which I'm 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 one week away from not doing because it's not a very interesting segment no. at the minute. No, it's not. Like not much goes on around this time of year at the box oh. office, so I'll just run you down the list, I suppose. In at number one this weekend at the box office was Spectre. 33 million. It dropped 52.2%, which is about your average drop. Yep. Nothing notable there. Um, and at number two was the Peanuts movie, the Charlie Brown movie, uh, with 24 million. Uh, dropped 45%, which is, yeah, average. Do you want to just skip the rest of this, mate? You look absolutely <laughs> miserable reading these look, stats out. You're literally if reading numbers not, off a list. Yeah, yeah, if it's not interested next week, I'm not doing it. Yeah, um, okay. And at number three... Love the Coopers, which is a new film I've never heard of. Yeah, me neither. Eight million. It's a really low uh, box office week. 
In at number four, though, this is kind of notable. The Martian is still hanging around in the really? top five. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it I'm not surprised in, it was a good film, but I'm it, surprised that it's hanging around this long. It raked in um, six million, uh, bring, uh, bringing its total uh, in America up to 207 million. What is that? Seven, eight weeks? Uh, I can tell you now, it's its seventh week. Seven Box weeks. Wow. Yeah. Seven weeks. Because it came out the week before we started the show. Yeah, yeah, it did. Holy crap, that is a lot of weeks still making yeah, it's, money. It's, it's, it's still making some bank. Uh, in a number five was a brand new movie, The 33, which is about the Chilean miners. Um, it, oh. it earned five million. I didn't even hear about this release. coming out. Oh, oh it's got Antonio Banderas in it. Oh, that actually, like, I'll, I'll, it sounds sure, really cool. I'll, I'll see it, that. Looks, it looks interesting. I'll see but, that. Uh, I want to go see that now. Yeah. So moving on to the actual interesting news. Yeah. First bit of news. Jessica Jones came out today on Netflix. Did it? And totally I'm, missed that. And I'm thinking about nothing else. I'm sorry. That's where my mind is. Yeah. I watched the first 17 minutes of, of episode one before I went out this morning. I loved it. You got a glimpse of David Tennant in it. And my mind is on nothing else. I just want to finish that episode when I get home. Fair enough. I'm going to have to... Do you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to finish, finish Deadpool. Daredevil. De- De- <laughs> do I you keep always say Deadpool. that. Deadpool. You always say Deadpool. I keep Deadpool saying Deadpool. Deadpool. Out I, yet, do, I do mean Daredevil. Although, yeah. I'm excited for Deadpool. I'm completely out of the loop right now. What is Jessica Jones? Jessica Jones. Uh, I should probably clarify for those that don't know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So Netflix uh, have the rights to some of the, the Marvel uh, franchise, some of the Marvel properties. The the Marvel properties that they own uh, is a group called The Defenders, which consists of Daredevil, which is the series that came out uh, early this year. And not Daredevil. Um, Luke Cage. Uh, who is by far one of the coolest people in Marvel Comics Super history. cool character. That guy gives none And he's in it. Jessica like, Jones. He's, he's fantastic. He's in Jessica Jones. Yeah. Um, Iron Fist, which is a martial arts master, and Jessica Jones, who is a private investigator with a bunch of miscellaneous superhero powers uh and i watched the first 17 minutes it's, it's very kind of focused it's it's very procedural they find a way with uh so you know like in csi the, yeah. the term procedural just means it's like it's got a kind of very technical art, like it's a very yeah. technical kind of this thing happened then they discover this then it's very it's kind of uh, run of the mill they always find a way to mix like the procedural elements of tv with some really awesome cinematic storytelling yeah because uh, daredevil is like that because uh, they're lawyers uh, by day. Can I just say one of the best things about Daredevil for me, and not Deadpool, the blood um, is is not. <laughs> it's it's really actually it's actually anything theories. where you get to see Kingpin just in his day to day stuff, the relationship, just yeah, the, yeah, the character yeah. building. How far did you get into uh, Daredevil? Um, I got to the episode after explosions. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. I'm, I'm trying yet. to stay spoiler free. You need to watch free. it. Honestly, honestly, Jay, I wouldn't normally recommend you sink 13 hours of your life into a series, but Daredevil is phenomenal. It, it's it, a really, it really, really great... Fi- it's got some amazing fight scenes. Uh, in episode two, there is this great corridor fight scene that is so... It's all done in one shot, like Old Boy. It's an, it, it has such a old boy vibe it's got the same, is it an like, improvement to the uh, 2006 deadpool with what's his name uh, oh ben the affleck. 2004 ben that's, affleck, that's the one, uh, yeah, ben affleck. De- 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 you also said deadpool again <laughs> oh did i oh yeah it's the same thing don't yeah, worry we don't blame you everyone does it no not everyone does it Shh, you do it and now you do it everyone does it <laughs> um but yeah it's a it's a really really gr- it's so much better it's so much better um charlie cox charlie cox yeah is is have you seen uh <laughs> stardust Yes, with okay. Robert De Niro as a as a pirate in drag. Yeah, yeah. The the lead guy from Stardust plays Daredevil. He's amazing. He really is. Uh, the Kingpin is played by Vincent D'Onofrio. One who's of the amazing. One of the best casting choices I think I've seen. Do they have that guy from the 2004 movie who like threw pens at people? You know, he killed, oh, like, bullseye. He killed the guy with a peanut. Yeah, that guy. Oh, the one that was played by Colin Farrell. The really annoying. Yeah, one. yeah. yeah um, the guy no. who choked an old lady he's, to death with a peanut. <laughs> he's not even in. <laughs> The next series, the next series, the villains are the Punisher and Elektra. Yeah, Electra the Punisher Jennifer Connelly's has brought character. to... Uh, not Jennifer Connelly. The Punisher. Jennifer Connelly? No, Jake, uh, not Jennifer Connelly. The Punisher, Who was as it? is going to be played... By John Bernthal, one of Connor's favourite actors. By John goddamn Bernthal, one of the <laughs> greatest people alive. Who's the, what's the name of the Ben Affleck's wife? It's not just Je- Je- Jennifer Connelly. I can't remember. Ben no. Affleck's wife. Can I just say, on, on the topic of John Bernthal, right? I recently thought that one of my favourite films at the moment is Fury, right? Mm. It, was a, it was a good, Super great... great. Histori- did, you see, did you see Fury? Fury yeah. it's, so a, it's a great historical drama. It's It's got 
tanks and machinery and explosions Shiny. but more Madly. importantly <laughs> more more importantly it's got john bernthal john brad pitt shia and shia, shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf on the screen together for two amazing. damn yeah. hours and that is amazing he's, he's phenomenal shia LaBeouf is great in that he's film. amazing he's a piece he of did art. some crazy stuff for that he, he like actually cut yeah. himself to have injuries yep. He knocked his teeth knocked out. His teeth out. Seriously? He didn't shower throughout the entire of the production. <laughs> Guy is nuts. People complained him. about him, but he honestly, the performance is amazing. <laughs> you can't argue know, with the performance. I don't know if it if he benefited from those things that he did, but he definitely didn't hurt the performance. If it, if I'm it, honestly on the fence look, on if, if if he's a good actor or not. He's like, I'm he determined he is crazy. He good acts method in his actor. everyday life. He is a character. Yeah. He's not Shia LaBeouf anymore. Mm. It's yeah, crazy. it's amazing. I I love him. He's been. Can we just have a Shia LaBeouf segment every week now? Because <laughs> well, we had one last week when we were talking about this, uh, this all happens my movies. This happens a lot. The Shire Hour. <laughs> the Shire Hour. Oh, that sounds like we could be talking about Lord of the Rings, though. It does. Uh, um, so moving on, because that wasn't really a piece of news. It was just me being excited for Jessica Jones. And no, it's kind of news. It started today. Yeah, it came out. And it's good. Well, it's not started. It's all 13 episodes are on Netflix. Oh, it's out. That's how they do, yeah, that's how they do it. Oh, okay. That's how Netflix okay, so it's out today, and yeah. it's good. The first 17 minutes were good. How, how long is it? What time did it come out today? Uh, early morning. Okay, so people have finished it by now, basically, <laughs> is what we're saying. There have been 13 hours since it came out, yeah, so pe- that's what there I'm are saying. probably it... people in the world who finished it. Yeah. Let okay. me know if it's good. Please, please, please don't spoil anything. If you want to tweet your non-spoilery review to at Jake Mulgrew, or all I've done is invite... FFT underscore, underscore podcast. podcast. Hey, our Twitter. So moving on. Another... Star Wars TV spot. I we know. talk about Star this... Wars TV spots every single week, and now I ask the question: Are there too many Star Wars trailers? Never. Yes. Jay, I'm going to go to you. <laughs> yeah, you feel like yeah, are you I a bit so. overwhelmed with I it? I think after that, wasn't it? Wasn't it a Japanese one that came out a while back? Yeah, there was yeah. an I think international they just one. Left it there. Yeah, like... like that one was pretty revealing, it's and then since months... then they've had like three TV spots. It's under a month now until it comes out. Yeah, right? we're not. You don't need a hype it anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's already sold. Slow down oh. the hype train. It's already. Did you bring look. the envelope? Excuse me, Katie. Did you bring the envelope? No. What is this? Very. No, I didn't bring the envelope. I thought I wasn't gonna bring it until like. We were gonna bring before. it and sellotape it to the window on set here. What is the envelope? This envelope is my Star Wars. Oh yeah, episode you're doing Star seven Wars predictions, predictions for the story. You? Yeah. And I told you I didn't want to hear it just in case you're right. Can I t- can I tell you that I figured out I think I figured out who You think you figured out who Finn is, yeah? No. It's Jar Jar Binks. Oh no, you figured out who Kylo Ren is? I think I figured out who Andy Circus is. He's Supreme Emperor Snoke. Oh, he's probably um Darth uh, Darth uh, Shush, Jake, What's Darth. his name? Darth Plagueis. Probably, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. If you're on, if you're okay. So if you're not a Star Wars fan, if you're not a Star Wars universe. fan, that won't mean anything to you. It's not a spoiler. You can still go and see the film and enjoy it. But if I you are a Star Wars fan, wrong. we are apparently both very much on the page that Supreme Leader Snoke is Darth Plagueis. Who's Andy Serkis? And that's not even capture character. That is not even the biggest thing that I think I figured out from this. Yeah. Well, it's actually great that you brought me onto that because Mark Hamill has teased that there is a secret in Star Wars Episode Seven that is bigger than the Darth Vader reveal in Empire. What could that even be? Like, what is... Bi- like, could, if you think iconic plot twists, Luke, I'm your father, is, like, the one. What could it be? And yeah, like, what What could top that? Can't Darth Jar seen... I need to rework my predictions. Oh, because... Because you... I haven't got anything s- that crazy big. He didn't specify anything, but he was talking about Luke Skywalker when he came up with that. So right, he... okay. So do you think he's evil? You know, stun, stun silence on the radio really doesn't help. No, it doesn't, but I can't <laughs> help that right now. I'm I don't thinking. like the idea of Luke turning out to be evil. That would just be lazy. It, yeah, it, he was evil I don't like it. Ooh, yeah. okay. it's, it's, it's not good because he was like the wholesome. He brought balance to the force. Plus, you know? it's kind of predictable. Like, yeah, everyone's expecting it's it. It's both unpredictable and predictable, if you get me. Like, yeah, I'm wondering oh, I have some other ideas now. Okay, you're going to have to update the envelope, yeah? Look, oh, I'm in crazy conspiracy week, mode now. Next week, me and Connor are going to come in with our envelopes. We're going to stick them on the window of the studio back here. We're not going to touch them until our episode on the 18th of December, yep. which is the day after we've seen Star Wars, and I'm so excited. Are we allowed to do that? Um, we are gonna, now. I'll let Ben know. We are now. I'll okay. let the studio manager uh, <laughs> let him know. Um, but yeah, so are there too, are there too many 
uh, TV yeah. spots with a question. With the question, you see, the thing is, some of them were getting a couple of seconds of extra footage, and it's mostly just reworking footage. But this new seen. one, I know you haven't seen it, is a lot of Finn, and yeah. it's a lot of new stuff. But you're wrong. I have already stuff. seen it. Oh, have you seen it? I have already. It's seen great. It. Right? It's good. It's really I like good. It. I, I tried think, not to watch it, but I think <laughs> that the promo materials so far have been too focused on Ray. Now, because I think she's the main character. No, she is the main character. I can guarantee it. Like, without a doubt, she's the main character. But it's sort of been at the expense of showing anything to do with Finn. But I like that. It's like he's a mysterious character. I don't want to know too much. Did you hear... He's part of... Sorry, I'm just still in conspiracy. Do you want me to talk about a potential spoiler? No. Okay, then fine. We have Um, rules here, Jake. We have rules. It's probably the best TV spot I've seen. It's crazy it's good. It's really good. You've it's got like good. the stormtrooper with the weird um, weapon. It's not a lightsaber, but it's kind of an electric like thing. Like Darth Maul's. Oh, like a cattle prod thing. thing. Um, you know, kind of like in episode three, uh, General I'm, Grievous's I've... Uh, henchman. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. the thing. It's kind of like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, and, and he goes toe-to-toe with Finn. Like a stormtrooper. I, I have been like. referring to it as an energy glaive. That works, I guess. Just there you go. JJ Abrams, back. you've got a couple of months. Wait, you got a month? Change it. Change <laughs> it now. Under a month, actually. Oh yeah, no, just under. Been... It is just, just under a month. Under a month. Yeah. I'm so Can you get us a sound effect. Get us a sound effect. I don't what, care which one. Just give us sound something. Day, <laughs> All sound effects. Yeah! yeah! It's yeah! under a month to Star Wars. Woo-hoo! We did it, Celebrate. everybody. We did it's it. Happened. We made it. Honestly, if it. I die before the 17th, <laughs> I'm. Like, I'll die the most miserable person in we'll the world. We'll take your corpse into the well, premiere. Yeah, <laughs> sort of please, please. We have tickets. Take my body. Sit next to me. Prop my eyes open. They won't work, but as long as I feel like we'll a do man. a sort of weekend at Bernie's smuggling you do, in. Like. Do a weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> take, me, take me to this thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, pre-sale no- ticket. It's you know, we were just talking about... Just like, whop, whop, whop. The three of us have got tickets. Me, you, and Katie. We're going to yeah, go we see do. it opening day. So um, excited. We're so excited. Uh, do you want to know the pre-sale number? The estimated pre-sale number for yes. Star Wars? And I think this is just America. 50 million. Wow. In, oh. pre- in pre-sale. Well, it's Star Wars. It's first yeah, Star Wars in what? I'll put oh, it in oh. perspective. I'll put it in perspective. Opening weekend, Spectre made 73 million. And that wasn't pre-sale. <laughs> well, it's, it's unsurprising. This is 50 yeah, million it's, it's the franchise confirmed. Do you think this will be <laughs> Avatar from highest grossing film of all time? Of course it will. You think, yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I'd be inclined to It'll think... It'll have the biggest weekend. I'd, I'd be inclined to think that it may come close. If it doesn't, it will not It will not have lost out to Avatar by an awful lot. No, it won't be. I don't think... I think it'll be close. It may go over, Why was though. Avatar so high grossing? Because it was like a big technical thing. And people yeah, but looking back, it. it's ugly. Yeah, it's it's looking back, it. I don't yeah. I don't like it anymore. What were the pre-sale numbers for it. Avatar? It was only like 30-something mil, though, wasn't it? I don't think there was that much pre-sale hype. Yeah, I think I know, it was word of mouth and kind of it was kind yeah. of after the fact. Uh, but yeah, we've got to move on because we've not got too much time yeah, left in this okay. first segment. Um, I'm going to talk about something potentially quite morbid, but it's an interesting thing to see how real world events kind of affect the just the whole. F- <laughs> Thanks for crunching your bottle into the microphone, Jay. No um, so the Paris attacks, horrible, horrible. None of us are, you know, I'm sure none of us. It's been a rough will week. Disagree. It's been on a rough international week for, scale. Yeah, for international stuff like that. Um, no one's going to see films, which no. is understandable. Um, what What was interesting is that Mockingjay Part Two uh, has come out and it hit on a Wednesday, which is normally a really big opening day for Paris and it, it, it did 50% less of what they expected it to do yeah. and 50% less of, of already pre-sold uh, tickets as well it's really interesting like it's it's very morbidly interesting yeah. but like uh, not necessarily surprising though to be honest. it doesn't shock me at all I get it 100% well I mean in ways I mean not even in ways it just is Paris is the home of cinema like it, lit- it, it, it literally is it's where cinema comes from so like the fact well, France in general, I think. I don't know if it's Paris. Oh no, Paris. Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. With George you're Melier talking about George Melier, Melier, yeah. the Lumiere brothers. Mm-hmm. It, it's literally the home of a film, which is one of the reasons I feel such a strong love for France. And yeah, of course. This last week has just been rough for everyone it's been, in it's general. Been really rough. Like not even just for people in Paris, but all over the world. There's been so much else it's, been happening. It's, like, so yeah, much. and like that's the thing. It's like it's not just Paris has been. 
attacks in uh, in East Asia, Middle East, yeah. Uh, Africa, I think Nigeria. Got, Nigeria earthquake got in Japan. Hit. Earthquake in earthquake in Japan. It's just been natural disasters and attacks. It's been it's been horrible. a really harsh week. And our support goes out to everyone that suffered yeah, I, from like, anything this week. It's yeah, just it's, it's been tough. Yeah. Um, Moving on though, because we don't want to linger on that for too long. Yeah, That's unfortunately, we've not got yeah. time to discuss the next item of news, so I'm going to put it after the break. Okay. Uh, so right now, uh, Connor, what what are we going to? This is our first musical break of the show. What are we going to? We are going to "I Need Some Sleep" by the Eels from the soundtrack. Of- oh, we're, what are you we're doing? live. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Film for Thought on Blast Media. That was. Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds from the soundtrack of The Brett. You ready? Visual oh. joke? Everyone in the studio? Yeah. Okay, there are two. Not happening. Yeah, there were two of us. That no, got that yeah, we put our fists up in the air. Joke. Like, uh, like, uh, once I again. the name of the character. Bender. Once again. Bender? Jake. Yeah. Bender. Yeah, Jake. Something like that. Yeah. Jake, please. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Once again, if you'd like to join the conversation here, you can tweet at FFT underscore podcast with hashtag FFT on blast to reach us. Not... At FFT podcast, the underscore is very important yeah. unless you are a big, big fan of the NFL. Of the NFL. Yeah, because so FFT I have immediately podcast... found another place that I'm going to go and subscribe to when this show is on. Because <laughs> FFT podcast is taken by Friday Football Tailgate, the podcast, yeah. them which then. is not us. Shout out to those guys. You made it so that we can't get the one Twitter handle we wanted. <laughs> but you talk about football, so I can't be mad. Yeah. So we talk about film. We do. We, we do. talk about film a lot. We still have more news. We do have more news. Uh, on a slightly jollier note from where we left off. <laughs> yeah, thank uh, you. One of the most interesting pieces of art that I think will happen, will exist for a, a very long time until Shia LaBeouf does his next thing. Yeah. Um, John Malkovich and Robert Rodriguez, the director of oh, God. Machete and, uh, other, and Spy Kids 4. This is already a perfect <laughs> crossover. They, so John Malkovich wrote a film. Oh, God. Robert Rodriguez directed it. Oh, come on. You will never see this film. What? Why not? No one in this room will see this film. Why not? Because it doesn't release until a hundred years from now. Ooh. Twenty-one fifteen. We may live to see it, though. You never know. Like, I mean, you NHS, know get your stuff Modern together. Medicine, I really yeah, need to see this NHS film. In the, in the fifties, people were only living to like what seventy, fifty. I'm going to wait yeah, yeah. until both of those men die, and I'm going to steal the film. <laughs> well, the the kind of I don't know if it's a joke or if they're genuinely doing this. They're like brewing a whiskey with it like they're letting a, a whiskey oh, wow. age along with the film reel so they put the film reel and a whiskey in the vault for a hundred years the film is called 100 years the movie that you'll never see which is funny those guys there is and uh there are two tr- there are two teaser this is the worst bit they put out two teaser trailers for it and a featurette so you can have a look at this cool film it's like they have taken a guess at what will ha- what the future in a hundred years will be like and John Malkovich wrote it, and Robert Rodriguez directed it. It's all ca- it looks kind of. I need to live so, to be a hundred and twenty. It's very, it's very low budget. Um, the green screening is not like is, is you know it's adequate, but it's gonna look like it's gonna look I really st- bad in a hundred years. Here's the thing: we talked about the sorry. Go ahead. So it's basically gonna be like a reverse time capsule type of a deal yeah. of the movie. Yeah. You see, the thing is, like I, we talked about this same concept with with Back to the Future. Uh, when yeah. it was Back to the Future week, about how, you know, the, the distorted view of what it's going to be like in the future. I still think one of the best possible representations of what the future might look like in modern media... Blade Runner? No. No? No. Her? No, actually. Oh. Although Her is actually good Her's for... pretty good. Like, I'm, I'm estimating Her future. will sort of come into fruition around about 2030. Yeah. It looks like if Apple yeah. owned the world. But no. <laughs> I'm <amazing>. talking... <laughs> which they do, you know. Sim City. Oh, yeah. Most m- most notably, SimCity, Cities of the Future. Like, yeah. it's got these crazy mega towers, like on the on the level of of the Dread film, except much cleaner, much sleeker, much more Apple. Yeah, much <laughs> more Apple. Because let's be serious, the so future, the future yeah. is plated in white plastic. I just want to warn you. Yeah, all. it's coming. Yeah. No, but how cool is that for a concept? It's a great concept for a film. Like, no one it, I just, alive I'm annoyed this, that I'm never going to see it. No one alive on this planet will see do. that film. Knows, it's ve- I, I you know, live to 119. Medicine may like, change. You know. like, I'm, I'm never going to live to 120. I doubt oh, I'm going to live till I'm 40. I was going to say, with the way we eat... <laughs> I'm going to be in a wheelchair by 30 and in a coffin by 40. <laughs> 
mum's listening, I'm sure she's thrilled to hear this. this. And if, if I'm not, shotgun retirement plan. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You say that you would never do. No, it. never. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Um, so, have you watched Days of Future Past yet? I have. It's a great film. Amazing film. Have you watched Absolutely amazing. Days of Future Past? Well, one of Peter Dinklage's best roles. The best part of that film, the Quicksilver scene. Absolutely. X Men Apocalypse is coming out. Yep. In 2016. Do we get I, more Quicksilver? We get. That is literally the story. Just more Quicksilver. Evan Peters has gone on record saying it is a much bigger sequence like it's just as elaborate when apparently it took them uh a couple like three weeks to shoot with the second unit um they spent do you know what i'm picturing in my head what i'm picturing going down like like a street like maybe middle of new york or something right like stuff's exploding cars and and pavements cracking around him Mm -hmm. and he's literally running towards the camera and we're getting to see stuff going past him and him you know just weaving in and out of all of these these intensely slow no it'll be way more intricate and like because the great thing about what he did in days of future past was that he was moving around the scene and changing stuff for when it came back into the kind of normal speed so he would like move bullets out of the way and he would like you know tap people's faces so that when like it it, it basically just knocks them flying and uh like move people's guns around it's a really intricate and really well shot scene with a bunch of really cool high speed photography oh yeah um it's kind of like dread kind of kind of like dread what's that drug called in it the um the jet what's it called the um Um, it's called (laughs) slow-mo the drug is called slow-mo like it's that it's that kind of thing um but it's an amazing sequence and they're going to be doing a bigger better one for apocalypse are you excited i am excited Jay, are you going to watch Days of Future Past? Probably not, because the last X-Men film I saw was the third one with, what's his name in it? Oh, yeah. Jimmy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. While we're on the topic... I'm the Juggernaut! You know? Yeah. 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 Word. While we're on the topic of high-speed photography, I actually saw something from a TED Talk recently. I love TED Talks, man. And if, Talks, you were, man. if you ever open a statement with, I've seen something on a TED Talk recently, it's, you, you know it's going to be... be <laughs> it's going to be a, a, a crazy interesting thing. I like Apollo Robbins, who is one of this, the best this, this, this post... This, this video is... All, uh, came out a while back basically have you seen um these scientists who have developed the first femto photography camera femto photography femto photography what does camera. that mean do you want to take a stab at how many frames a second oh wow femto uh, photography femto. is femto. i'm guess i'm thinking five something fen fen feels fivey to me five <laughs> five fen feels fivey I'm to me say 50, i want that on a t-shirt Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand yeah. frames a second we do more than fifty thousand. we have frames more than fifty thousand in, right. in the red epics um no you don't have it in the red epics do you not no awesome. they're not five million maybe yeah I, I would i some... would i would say five million frames fento feels five, five, five million yeah okay you are wrong by a factor of 10. It Whoa. is a 5 billion frame a second camera. Whoa! How like does that what, work? How long does it take to watch a second of Have film? Have you ever wanted to see a bullet in slow motion, Jake? And when I say in slow motion, I don't mean going at like a reasonable speed across the, the screen. I mean, do you want to see a bullet barely moving in flight? Like, what is that per second? Like, Why would you if we that? If you reduce that down to 25 frames, or even 60, let's call it 60. In fact, let's do 50 frames because it's easy to, like, calculate. That's like 5 million seconds. My math is probably way wrong. Way more. <laughs> way more. The point million? is, ah. the point is they recorded a 10 second video with it. And if you watch it at the individual, like if you watch it at, at cinematic twenty four, mm-hmm. it takes something like five days to watch that footage. That's crazy. Why would you even need a, f- like, a Fento camera? What detail? What, can what would you, you do? I mean, with that? for science, yeah, I, I like the idea for science. Can just think about it's cinematically. Like, it's yeah. physical yeah. application yeah. in filmmaking, though. What application would that have in filmmaking? Realistically. Realistically. Um, it would be extremely, extremely niche things. Like I can't think of anything yeah, off the top of my head. Yeah, I'll extremely sit down for five niche. days and watch this film. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm on, not on about filming an entire thing in, in. I know, but like, what detail could you possibly get that you would put? I don't know if it's practical. Well, no. And really, but it's fun. It's <laughs> yeah. D- trust me, scientifically, 
amazing. There's got to be something. <laughs> There's got to be something that would benefit from it. I'm sure they'll figure. It. Robert Rodriguez will probably figure Maybe it that's out, what that film and then is. and then save it for a hundred yeah, years from yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe when we open it up, it's just gonna be a five day long film. Yeah, they've actually filmed the first film. It actually takes a hundred years to watch. <laughs> That's, That's why, why no one's going to see it. It's hundred years to film. It's actually playing right now in the vault. Oh, that—that that would be amazing. Um, I'd, I'd love, to, I'd love for that to be exactly what it is. Actually, that'd be crazy good. Did anyone in this room watch Now You See Me? No. Is that the one about magicians? Yeah, yeah. it looked a bit naff to me, but it made a magician thing. Jesse Eisenberg, Jesse, 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 Jesse Eisenberg, Morgan Woody Freeman. Uh, Woody Harrelson's in it. Morgan Freeman's a side character. Yeah, uh, Michael Dave Caine. Franco, uh, and Isla Fisher. Is it my, uh, pretty Michael? Sure Michael Caine's, Caine's in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now you see me two is coming out because they made a bunch of money. because of course it is yeah well no they made a bit, bunch of money you know three hundred and some million uh, that film raked in you know that's sequel money yeah you know um, so they've got now you see me two <clears throat> I watched the the trailer came out this week that's sorry the, just that's quickly is it spelt two as in T O O no no the number two oh, okay. um if this isn't like a dumb and dumber situation although they spelled it t-o, T-O yeah which, which was, was really funny genius that was the apparently the film the, film. the, f- yeah. <laughs> the film was garbage was but... it shia labeouf in that as well like was a he? young shia LaBeouf. i swear he was yeah in, dumb and dumber in the two. original dumb and dumber i, no, I, I didn't, didn't watch dumb dumb either two, two, of them yeah. no, 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 just throwing no, no, something i've never seen the original dumb and dumber no no i swear shia labeouf was no dumb and dumber two came out like last year Oh, I'm thinking dumb of dumb and dumber. And, yeah, I'm thinking of like dumb that. and dumber. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, ignore me. <laughs> well, back to our regular program. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, um, uh, so I, the trailer came out for Now You See Me Too. Uh, you know, I watched it because you know that's what we do here. We watch it so you don't have to. We watch films and trailers. For and films. trailers. We watch it so you don't have to. But if you probably want to watch, did it you watch absolutely you anything? Like your, uh, no, Three hundred million terrible. says yeah, that you, you watched. You, the first you, one. you seem very angry about absolutely. We'll talk about it in a bit. Okay. Um, if, if I get the time before the end of the segment, we'll talk about absolutely anything. Um, so there's no Isla Fisher in this sequel. No? Or at least not in the trailer. I didn't okay. do any research. Um, but in in her in her place is another actress who's... Uh, she was in uh, Cloverfield. She had her head all exploded. I can't remember the name of the actress. Um, is this going to be like a, uh, like a Transformers Megan Fox moment where it's going to be like, oh, we're just going to not talk about... The fact yeah, that probably the they'll replaced. just talk about. Yeah, they'll just talk about it. And probably ignore it. Um, but this film does have more Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe's in it. Oh, and poor, really, poor guy. They're really like using him as a selling point. He didn't show up in the trailer until the last ten seconds. And the uh, poor guy. He's yeah, a good yeah, actor. but he turns. So he turns around at the end of the trailer. He, he does. He tries to do a bit of shuffling and he fails. So I assume. Oh, he's it's like funny because he's a wizard. Oh, that's I didn't even joke. put that together. Really? Like the, 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 yeah, that's, oh, that's awful. That that's is kind of funny. Joke. That is kind of funny. I'll be honest. Yeah, I find but that funny. the oh, casting funny. choice should not be made on a gimmick, though. No, no, no. It's not. I'm sure it's not a gimmick. I'm sure. It, like Daniel, I like Daniel Radcliffe. Um, but yeah, so he tr- he does this. He tries to shuffle. He messes it up, and then he turns around. and He's like, oh, "I'm so excited to be joining you." And it's like it, it. It looks like they're just using him as a selling point. And Daniel Radcliffe is more than Daniel Radcliffe. He is an actor, and I do genuinely yeah, he's like fantastic. him as an actor. Um. And I wish he wasn't being used as, a, as, as kind of a selling point, as like yeah. a poster thing, you know. Uh, now with more Daniel Radcliffe. What's <laughs> Rupert Grimm been doing? Not a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen him. He, in a he has. He owns an ice cream. He did. He owns an ice cream, ice cream van. What's up with that? <laughs> to be honest, if I was in Harry Potter, I'd just live through Ortiz the rest of my life. Yeah, I, just, I, would, I would. I would just sit Ron back Weasley. and be like, Yeah, I don't need to do anything. I'll make. I think seeing what people who are in Harry Potter are doing now is Emma Watson's doing pretty well for herself. She is she's one doing of incredibly the well. greatest people on planet Earth at yeah, the minute, and I, I'll say that definitively. She's she's wonderful. Yeah, the stuff that she's doing with UN Women is amazing. The He yeah. and She project is amazing. She's also going to be Belle in the live action uh, Beauty and the Beast, and I am so excited. I think for Katie it. might Katie be excited about that. Excited oh, there goes the microphone. Yeah. Hey, Katie. The reason why I'm so excited is one, I absolutely love Disney, but yeah, two, it comes both. out the day after my birthday. Oh, that's going to be a good birthday. Ah. Yeah, but uh, so I'll just, just because I want to talk about it now, I'm kind of gushing a bit. Katie, stay on mic. We'll chat about this. Um, <laughs> it's just me and you. Forget these guys. Okay. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just sit over here. Um, then. So Emma Watson's in it. She's playing Belle. Uh, Ewan McGregor's in Ewan it as McGregor Lumiere. Ewan plays Lumiere. Sir um, Ian McKellen is Cogsworth. Cogsworth. You've got uh, uh, <laughs> Emma Thompson's in it, I, th- I think. Yeah, Emma Thompson's yeah. in it. She plays uh, Mrs. Potts. It's just, it <laughs> I'm so excited. so good, right? I'm so excited. Okay, that ends our little gushing segment. About... Oh, okay. Are you finished? <laughs> yeah. yeah glad, glad to be back. <laughs> so what happened Where while had I was away, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. Um, Stallone is around. Sly Stallone. <laughs> he's yep. still here. He's been promoting his film Creed. 
with Michael B. Jordan about the son of Apollo Creed. Uh, the guy who... Michael, I've, I've not Michael watched Jordan, any of them. Really? Yeah, Michael B. Jordan plays the son of Creed. The I forget he Creed. exists. No, he's really good. I love Michael B. Jordan. He's great. He's just not in just a lot. Don't, yeah, just don't talk about Fantastic Four. Yeah. Or Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. So, an interviewer... Can, sorry, could I just actually... Like, we, we've we avoided talking about fan, fan four stick. Yeah, for good reason. A lot. But go on. I'm not... I'm just going to say... Get me in a bad mood. All four of those actors... Are great. Are what amazing happened? actors. What? Yeah. I, I saw an Miles, advert on the bus. I thought, that, that looks really cool. Yeah, no. it yeah. wasn't. Did you, Please tell me you didn't see it. I did Because me and Connor went to see it, and I wish we hadn't. Like, I genuinely... At the end of it, I was like... There were times where I nearly left. Oh, you've got me on it now. There were times where I nearly left. Right? I'm sorry, you, guys. You almost stormed you, off. I, genuinely. He's pointing at me in a threatening manner. <laughs> I no, can see that. Genuinely, though, Connor. And yeah. you made me stay yeah, because you didn't want to waste the money. Like, you're not a person who leaves bad films. I, I don't leave bad films. You are correct. I, sit I through, do. I do. I sit through them I left, so that I have enough information I to justify American why Hustle. they were a bad film. I left American Hustle. You did. Which yeah, objectively, I've not, seen, I've not seen American Hustle since. Um, you got bored and fell asleep. The problem was, I'd just seen Wolf of Wall Street. And Wolf of Wall Street is just so high energy. This is American not in relation like, to, uh, to Fan Four Stick, by the way. This is oh, oh. Fan Four Stick is garbage. <laughs> Calm down, Jake. It's so so angry. But anyway, that so ending, Jake. To- <laughs> what happens in the end? Is it, is it a oh, it's just fantastic. Wait, I think I've got an idea for our name. I'm not kidding. Seriously. It, yeah. And then he goes. <gasps> It's like the end of Avengers, you know, where he's like, Avengers. And I don't mind when Avengers do it because it's a good film. <laughs> I'm so angry! <laughs> You've got me so angry. Calm down, Jake. <laughs> Thank you for I doing told... that away from the yeah, mic. Yeah, <laughs> I pulled my mic far let's away from Let's change myself. the subject. Anyway. No, so we, were talking about... <laughs> we were talking the about... Thing the thing CGI, Stallone. Jake. The thing CGI. <laughs> we were talking about Sylvester Stallone. Oh, I'm just angry now. Um, Breathe, and, and So in an, he's been pro- while he was promoting the film Creed, he's been talked to about like re- people rebooting his other franchises. So he talked about I can't remember what other, but but basically he got on the topic of who would someone asked him who would you like to see play Rambo in a reboot, and he said Ryan Gosling, and that's an amazing choice. That is an amazing. But what's choice. more amazing is Cinema Blend then spoke to Ryan Gosling while he's been promoting really? um, The Big Short, which oh. looks amazing. I don't know if you've heard anything about The Big Short. It's got Carell, uh, Steve Carell, uh, Christian Bale, uh, Ryan Gosling, and a bunch of people. It's about the like the housing market crash or something. So it's It just looks great. It's got a great okay. cast. And it's Steve Carell in another dramatic role, so I'm excited about it. But basically, uh, Cinema Blend went to Ryan Gosling and he said, hey, Stallone said if he had to pick anyone to be Rambo in a reboot, John Rambo, uh, he would pick you. And Ryan Gosling just, like, geeked out. He was like, oh, I love Sloan. He's like, you know, he got very excited, which is so cute. Uh, I love Ryan Gosling. Uh, I, right, I just... Can we just talk about how, like, recently celebrities have just been getting significantly better? Yeah, they're like... There's a lot the, less crap in the celebrity world Yeah, because right mm. I feel like, you know, back in the like the kind of 90s era, the 80s era, they were all quite... They're all, the bigger personalities yeah. now, like, I love The Rock... He does a bunch of cool stuff. I'm sure the Rock's like, the best. And I'm not saying everyone's perfect, and I don't think no. anyone should be based purely on what they put in front of camera. But they're entertaining people, and some of them really do their bit for charity. Some it's probably because really it's social media now, because like they're getting they're like first hand engaging with their fans. It's now. crazy how close like, fans are to yeah people yeah. now. And this like, is especially prevalent. Like, celebrities the... used to be gods. Like, yeah, it was like you could. Like I people. can't touch. Like you know, no one could be on the level of Marlon Brando yeah. when he was a big thing. No, but no one could be on the level of James Dean. He, he like, but now Twitter, it's like I I I can send words to Chris Pratt. Yeah, and and, and Chris Pratt them. can read them yeah. and send you words back if he wants to. If he wants to, Chris Pratt. He's probably visiting a children's hospital just dear Chris, though, because he's a cool dis, dude. Dear Chris Pratt. Yeah, get in you, touch, Chris Pratt. In touch. At we, FFT we love you. podcast. We love you we so much. We absolutely love he's you. He's definitely listening to us right now. He's absolutely. definitely listening, absolutely. so I don't know why you we, would We not. know you're out there, Chris. We know <laughs> dear you're Chris there. Pratt, thank you for representing <laughs> Minnesota well. <laughs> is he from Minnesota? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Oh. Minnesota. Where from Minnesota is he? Uh, do you know exactly? No, no. I just oh, know he's from Minnesota. Thanks. I'm gonna Way look it up. Represent. I'm gonna look it up. Um, oh, like, yeah, you know, not it, even yeah. not even just in the film world though, with celebrities just generally getting better recently. We were talking before the show about rather a shocking change recently. And I say shocking because really? no one anticipated it. But Justin Bieber is oh, sort yeah. is sort of like I still don't excuse any of the stuff he's done in the past, and yeah, this he's is not been a bit of a douche before. because he, he's been a bit <laughs> eh. But he's recently started to. Be a moderately respectable person. Yeah, <laughs> he's held a minute, uh, a, a moment of silence for the Paris yeah. attacks. And really, aside from really anything else, like, he's not being a crazy, irresponsible asshat. 
<laughs> that's one way I think is, is, is the way. key point so, um, so moving yeah. on yeah. from that piece of <laughs> news basically, I was going to say that piece of news by the way just in case you joined late was about Ryan Gosling it was. geeking out yeah. it wasn't anything to do with celebrities but oh I suppose uh, uh, whatever um, the AFI they do awards they do the American Film Institute um, and they've pushed back their awards consideration period in order to fit Star Wars in Seriously? Now they, they I love to, them. Now that doesn't mean that Star Wars will definitely get into the top ten. It definitely but they, will. <laughs> it definitely will. It's Star Wars. Well, it's it's about like best film. It's so like Star Wars. We like you n- missed a piece of news. None. Of, hold on a minute. None of us are really entertained. The uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about that because it's a it's a little bit. We'll talk about it in a minute because okay. you made me bring it up now. Um, but yeah, I think it's. It, it, we still need to entertain the possibility that Star Wars 7 might be bad. I'm sorry. It, it could, might be a new it's not going to be. I've seen, I've I will seen, entertain the possibility, but it's not going to be. I've seen a, a amazing camp- like campaigns for films that have been just garbage. You know, it happens sometimes. Uh, but yeah, uh, so they push back their consideration period in order to fit in uh, it, Star Wars, which I think is a good move because it could genuinely be one of the top 10 films of the year. Likely, yeah, absolutely could. Um, Justice League Dark. Are you a fan of Justice League Dark? I am. The comic book? I am. Have you, do you, are you aware of what Justice League Dark is? No. It's kind of like the gritty, Sinister Six-esque, uh, kind of Suicide Squad-y version nah, of the... It's, it's more like a mystic... Oh, you, well, yeah. Not a fan you're of the whole edgy, you're not a fan of the reboot sort of thing. Big thing. But they're kind of a gritty version of the Justice League. Yeah. Um, and a film is coming out. They're doing a film yeah. of it, okay, uh, apparently. Uh, which I've... It was originally supposed to be done by Gilmero Del Toro a, a couple of years hey, really? ago. Yeah, yeah, which would have been cool. That's changed my opinion slightly. Yeah. I love Del Toro. Del Toro would have been great for it, but he's not doing it, unfortunately. Oh. Um, they're eyeing for the role of John Constantine, Connor, so you know a bit of Oh, Constantine. really? They're, they're looking at Colin Farrell to play Constantine. That's actually pretty good casting. I don't know anything about Constantine. I know that you're the DC guy, so uh, I just Constantine is literally the character that they gave to Keanu Reeves in the Constantine film, except he's not nearly as annoying. Okay. <laughs> and Thanks he doesn't that. have nearly as much Shia LaBeouf at his side. So. <laughs> That's a good point. There's another film that I keep forgetting Shia LaBeouf's and it's Is Constantine. Oh, yeah. I don't think he, play, he plays the sidekick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's I've reached the end of my news. Do you want to talk about I, that other thing? I want to. I want to show me on your phone. I want to know what's going on there because that seems firstly completely irrelevant to everything ever, like. Why is this a piece of news? Oh, so you t- so for those who don't know, Connor's just show me on his phone. Basically, uh, Chris Pratt and uh, Jennifer Lawrence are doing a film together. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the details, but she's basically come out and said because she felt so weird about the whole thing. Yeah, she had to get insanely drunk to film a sex scene with P- Chris Pratt, and everyone's reporting it. Like, what? Why, why is this a this big isn't a deal? piece of news? Yeah. This like is. It's- I don't know. I mean, was she comfortable? Like, y- yeah, something feels that weird point? about that piece of news, right? Yeah. I'm not yeah. wrong in thinking that. I no, don't know if I'm no, just No, there's being... definitely weirdness here. But I think what's weirder is the fact like no one else is picking up on this weirdness and is still reporting it. Like, cool. This is not something that has to be reported on. If someone has, if someone has said that they were uncomfortable doing something, firstly, I think the filmmaker should have probably exactly. thought about whether or not they wanted to make her go through with this scene yeah right? she, shouldn't, she shouldn't have to be drunk to no go it wasn't that. that she was uncomfortable it was just an awkward situation they're good friends yeah. like they're, they're both very big personalities and yeah. both quite comfortable Absolutely. with people but anyway it just feels like a weird piece of news uh it, shout it, out to um yeah. uh, cancerian mam on twitter who for those who don't know is I our mother is. um she says chris hemsworth should be the new rambo no which i, I don't like as much as i like Gartling. no sorry mom <laughs> so Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to cut to a musical break. Connor, what music are we playing now? If you give me a second, I've uh, accidentally... I could tell you what it my is. List. <laughs> oh, yes. We've got uh, Gangster's Paradise <laughs> by, uh, by Coolio. Play that. Uh, spin that. that is spin from that. the soundtrack. <laughs> I say that. spin it like we're actually... I'm trying to buy decks. time here while I get the notes up so I can see what the, it's from. Uh, well, we'll tell you what film it's from. It's from the soundtrack Dangerous of Dangerous Minds. Wow, Katie's on point. You are on it. Yeah. So, uh... Enjoy the song. song. Uh, Be sure to get in touch at FFT underscore podcast. Welcome back 
to Film for Thought on Blast Media. That was Staying Alive by the Bee Gees from the soundtrack of Saturday Night Fever. It's a pretty indie song. We don't blame you if you don't know that song. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, no, a little, it's, it's a little small under time the radar. Band. Small yeah. time so, band. You know, yeah. not a couple bit of obscure. small... Yeah. Yeah, bit, bit obscure. Once again, if you'd like to join the conversation here, you can tweet at FFT underscore podcast with hashtag FFT on Blast. Or don't use the hashtag. Or we'll don't use the anyway. hashtag because we have our own Twitter now. <laughs> We've said that at the beginning of every segment. And yeah. it's still exciting. It's still exciting. So excited about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this week's theme, because we are done with the news now. We're done with the news, we and are. we, as, as, oh, as we always actually, do. I do have one amendment that I need to make. Oh, yeah, of course you do. The femto photography thing, I was wrong. I should have, like, I only watched the video a few weeks back and haven't thought about it since. I got the frame rate wrong. It's not billion, it's one trillion frames a second. That's a ridiculous it's, amount yeah, of frames. Like, with what that, are you going to do with that many frames? You could see time itself <laughs> you can explore the cosmos yeah look into time itself you stare can it look in the into face. the core of a human being and maybe maybe you could see the exact point at which adam sandler's career died maybe though that's Do still a bit that, of a blur that is such a high speed photography camera yeah. that you can literally like, look through time with it like you could like it's like a time machine i don't think that's how it works jay. no it's yes not. it is jay don't Ruin my yeah, story. that's how it works, Jay. So no, we no we move on after our news yeah. to to a film talk segment. Connor, you lead the film talk segment. What is our theme for the week? Our theme this week, Jake, is one that I know you've been excited to talk Super about. Super excited, so excited because one of, like our joint favorite film, the fr- the fa- the film that we rate the highest between the two of us. Sorry, I'm doing it comes under this category. Yeah, and that's Whiplash. Yeah, this is. Sorry, I just that was, what was that, Jake? Yeah, drums. Yeah! Yeah, no, it's a. Me- have you seen Whiplash? This is not this- yet. No. Oh, it's so good, Jay. You understand if you watch it. Guys, I don't expect drums. I don't expect shouting. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. a good summary, actually. There's some amazing this quotes. This is from Music Davidson. Week. It's Music Week. It is Music Week, and that's not Musicals Week. This is Music Week. We're talking specifically about the music of film history and films. Films, and films based based around music on music. So, I think we'll be talking about Eight Mile in a bit. We'll talk about. Yeah, Australia we'll, we'll talk about Eight Mile because it's talk about great. Mile it's brilliant. Uh, but do you want to start with Whiplash? I, th- I feel like we kind of have to. It's so good. It really is. It's one of the most tense films I've ever seen. Yeah. Absolutely. I've heard the last 10 minutes just a drum solo. The yeah, last 10 really, minutes are really a, a drum, drum solo, solo entirely, but it's the You most might think that sounds thing. boring, but watch that uh, drum solo. You are never... Like, I was physically in the theatre. You could have, I could feel my heart pumping out of my chest. And I, I was explaining it... Um, to I very rarely have a visceral reaction to films. <laughs> I was I was explain no that's the thing it is a visceral it reaction is. It is, it's it's like it gets you but I was I was explaining my love for Whiplash to a certain lady uh, today um, a certain and, lady yeah a certain, a certain lady, lady. Um, would you like to reiterate uh, this conversation not anything to do with this certain lady but uh, yeah like I'll t- yeah go, I'll over, t- go over the conversation I was explaining what to her about my love for Whiplash yeah and. Uh, I bet it's one of the few films I've seen two films that people have stood up and applauded at the end. One yeah. of them was at a film festival, so it's kind of etiquette to do that. You know, yep. it was Men, Women and Children. Not a great film, but you know, still decent. And the other was Whiplash, which was in a commercial screening among people who are not really? big film fans. They w- See, the I stood thing up thing and that happened is when I was um seeing Les Miserables, Les, Les Miserables that yeah. one French, French singing one yeah and like there was just all these old ladies sat behind us and yeah they were, they were crying and they were just stood up clapping yeah it well even like scene. it didn't happen when we saw Les Mis like uh there was clapping there, 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 yeah, was, there not, was, was not a standing, standing clapping, ovation but, but there was I'm talking about end of whiplash you've got the last drum beat yeah. and I was stood clapping people around me were cheering it, yeah. it's just such a like it gets you it like if you it's watch sort of like it, a release of emotion and I d- yeah it is such like the entire drum solo is a build up run us through what it's about so Whiplash is about uh, a uh, music student at Schaefer, uh, Schaefer, Academy. Real Schaefer place? Academy, which I believe is a real place. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, in New York, it's a music I'll look school. It up. Um, Thank yeah, you. thanks. Um, it's a music school, uh, and the introduction is he's he's practicing in this room, and then uh, J.K. Simmons comes in. He's playing a character. It's not called J.K. Simmons. His name's Fletcher in the film. So this guy Fletcher comes in. He's a notorious, like notoriously badass, amazing composer. Uh, not composer, sorry. Um, teacher. Drum not even teacher. Drum what, what's the thing conductor. I'm saying? The conductor. Thank you. That's the one. Uh, jazz, jazz orchestra conductor. Um, and so it's about him. Try. It's about this guy, this kid Andrew, played by Miles Teller from the Fantastic Four. Um, so Fan just quickly, Schaefer Academy, real place, not in New York, is it not? 
It's in Minnesota. Hey, Minnesota. <laughs> it's all so coming you've got full Chris circle Pratt. Today. You've got uh, the Vikings. You've got Shaper, Shaper Academy. Academy. Is it a music and a club? lot of lakes. Is it a music? Club? I don't know. I can't, I couldn't find the details. I could only okay. find right. Well, um, so yeah, it's about this guy progressing through the ranks of like East Arton, kind of a, a kind of a rubbish, jazz orchestra. They're they're all right, but they're not great. Like, and then he he works his way up, and basically when he gets to this first rehearsal in J.K. Simmons uh, character, the Fletcher Fletcher's um studio band, it turns out Fletcher's crazy. Oh yeah. Like he off is off the he walls. Throws. Wait, isn't he a real guy? It's based off. Like apparently, he's this, I think he's real based... teacher. He's so, so at his they tell an anecdote in the film about. Um... Oh, I'm gonna get the names wrong. So Charlie Parker, the bird. Yep. I don't know if he was the thrower or the throwy, but basically, there's this whole story about like a, a Charlie guy... Parker got hit with the symbol. Yeah. No, well, he it, it missed him. Otherwise, he'd be dead. Um... <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Probably probably decapitated but basically it's not the, sharpened Jay. what happened was he got, this guy this musician you never got know up on this, stage. this isn't this isn't that bank scene in hancock it's the, not. the musician um got up on stage and he plays as a solo and it was all right but basically it wasn't good enough for this guy and he throws a symbol at his head like and then uh charlie parker becomes the bird he like comes back because he's you know it, it drives his passion and the idea is that um fletcher's character is trying to do the same thing uh and it's kind of ambiguous if him being a kind of a brutal guy is part of a plan or if he's just a mean man. Monster. He's just a monster. So it's it's kind of ambiguous. But if you read what's interesting, and not a lot of people will know this because not a lot of people are nerds like me. If you read the screenplay, there's a lot of stuff that is cut out that kind of ruins the ambiguity of it. Yep. So it makes it look like he's this sympathetic character who's just doing it because he wants to find sort of scaring raw, him straight. Sort yeah, of thing. he wants to find like the raw musician in him, and I don't like it. <laughs> like I don't like the screenplay. I'm glad they cut out what they cut out. Yeah. Um, because the film is perfect. Like it's it's not, it's not perfect. perfect. No film. No is film is perfect. perfect but the in two the films that I consider sins. closest to perfection are The Social Network and Whiplash. No film is without sin, but this one has just about the fewest you can find. No, it's so cinema. great. The it's the sound design is amazing. Oh, the, yeah. well, the, it's that music. The so. acting is phenomenal. The music in it is great. I just the have end nothing of Act but two. Great. The end of Act two. Do we go into spoilers for Whiplash? It's a year old. It's, yeah, now. it's a year old. Go ahead. There the is a two. crash. Oh yeah, the car crash. Yeah, there is a car crash. So this uh, this truck just totals like. Like, just nowhere, just like just t bone the camera the camera uh, sits in the cockpit wait, of whose the car, car is it is it jj simmons no no no, no um miles it's, uh, teller's character yeah. andrew um he just gets t-boned by it's, a big ass truck it's perfect it's a really visceral moment so it's basically the way it's done technically moment. if we're going to talk about technical stuff on this show i pooped a little so, bit when it happened terrifying it scared me it, it completely got caught me off guard um even though it's in the trailer yeah. which i wish it wasn't i didn't see that trailer i'm so glad oh, i didn't right. see well, that trailer anyway. um so he gets hit by this car and basically the way it works is he's on the phone and he throws his phone down it pans down to the phone and when it pans back up bang v- like truck hits the side of the car and it's an amazing moment, and and it, it stays a static shot as the as the car flips. The world outside is just spinning. It's one of those uh, moments where framing and it's a, re- it's a- is key because it's like yeah. if that had been if we'd have seen the truck coming the entire time, no, it would have been nothing. It would have been awful. Like it has worked in other films where you yeah, see the, sure. Like what was it? The um, uh, my the for- my mother knows the name the of the film. Is it the forgotten? Where there's like, there's, like a, there's a pair of headlights that you see at the end of a road yeah, just yeah, coming I think towards this car for like two minutes, but you never you never yeah, notice you never it. And then there's a car yeah. crash where it just collides head on, and it's the car. crazy. Um, it's crazy. But in this case, it's one of those ones where the framing only leaves you just enough time to process. Yeah, the information of the truck coming towards the car. It doesn't give you much time to adjust to which the is, fact that it's happening, which is perfect because. It puts you closer into this scene. It's, it, it gives you a much more, like, realistic reaction. Mm. And it's a great character moment because basically Miles Teller crawls out of the car and he's like, "I've still got to go to this music." <laughs> yeah, road. he gets so up and he road. gets he gets there. Crazy he messes dude. up because he's like he's battered and blood everywhere. He's sat at the drum kit trying like the sticks are slipping out of his hands because there's blood everywhere. And <laughs> J.K. Simmons kicks him out of the band. <laughs> He, J.K. Simmons turns around and Martella just tackles him. And an interesting fact 
about that scene. I don't know if you know this fact. Miles Teller broke J.K. Simmons' rib doing that tackle. I am aware That's of that. Passionate. That is... But it's like... I love stuff like that. It's like DiCaprio in January. Yeah, the broken and he, glass. You know, he breaks his... He gets blood on his hand. It's not scripted. Or Shia LaBeouf in um, of, Fury, you know, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, well, he cuts himself. We talked about that. One of my favourite instances of that is still Viggo Mortensen in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> What happened there? He, like, you know the scene at the start of The Two Towers where they're looking for uh, Merry and Pippin and he kicks this orc helmet. They made him do that take, like, 70 times because they couldn't get one where they felt like he was giving a real enough, like, an emotional enough reaction to yeah. discovering that the hobbits may be dead. Yeah, yeah. On one take, he kicks it so hard that he breaks his toe. And the scream... It's real He pain. gives out. Like, you, you mm. can feel... Like, you can physically figure out halfway through the, the scream you can tell when he realizes his toe is in immense pain yeah because it's like it's a scaling like, ah! scream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I it's like the most that's the take they went with they left it in it's the crazy good best injury in the lord of the rings film though the most iconic injury is when uh like frodo's going out on that boat and don't Sam talk about it no, 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 okay you can, you can go away Sa uh sean astin runs into the it is it is sean astin Run anyway, he runs into the water after Frodo on this boat and he steps on a shard of glass oh. that is in the water. And they're water. barefoot, they're hobbits. And they're barefoot, exactly, because yeah. they're hobbits. They've got a couple of like loose prosthetics. Yeah. But yeah, it just ruined him. <laughs> anyway, did, did they use Connor, you can come film? back. Hmm? Did they use that take in the film? I don't think they used the take in the film. Did they use the take in the film? Well, no, because oh, it would have been like... Oh, the Sean Austin ah. injury. Yeah, yeah. No, because no, he stops. Yeah, because he stops because he's, got... he's yeah. bleeding everywhere. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from injuries to music in music, film, because yeah, that's yeah, the theme. Yeah. Um, okay. Eight so Mile. Whiplash is impalpable. Yeah, eight eight Mile, it's great. Watch it. Yeah. Eight Mile. Eight Mile. Also great. Watch it. <laughs> End of review. No. Um, <laughs> I wish I, wish I could seen do eight that mile? thing that you no, did to me. No, I'm the, uh... not really that interested because I don't really like Eminem. D like, like, you don't need to like Eminem. If oh, you, no. It's such an interesting thing. It's because not a film about Eminem, but let's be serious. It's, it's a, film a film about, about Eminem. Eminem. It's, 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 what? <laughs> it is. It is. The, the character in the film is not Eminem. It's well, B-Rabbit. It's B-Rabbit, it's, it's it's like, but yeah, that it's character, it's character is Eminem. His name's B-Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Bunny Rabbit. Oh, right. No, but here's the thing. Here's why... Eight Mile fascinates me. It's the same reason I listen to rap music because yeah. I'm not necessarily up for everything that gets said in rap. No. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the kind of misogyny. You know, the the, the drug. Not all of it's Eminem like that. Is, I want to clarify. Not all like that, though. but Eminem, like Eminem himself is kind of. You know, yeah, you know, and he's he's done. He's said awful things on songs and stuff. But that's not why I listen to rap. No, I love the craftsmanship of like it's crazy. phrases. I, 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 lo I love spoken word, I love poetry, but I love rap because they find such interesting ways to I like... I think one of... I, amazing metaphors and rhythms I think one of the best examples of this is actually from Eminem, uh, and it's... Be careful. I don't have any lines <laughs> yeah. to go right here, so tubby, 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 no. tubby, 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 fellas. Okay, that's not the best example. <laughs> uh, but like, when, when you get an... An awesome like lyric, yeah, from a song. and that's why Eight Mile. I love Eight Mile because it's it's like freestyle, quote unquote. It's not freestyle, but it's like the whole film is in freestyle rap. Yeah, it's all kind of. It's got this kind of. Uh, it's a rhythm. Phrase? It's it, there's a ri there is a genuine rhythm of the film. Not everything is like a dead on synchronized rap. It's a film that but, doesn't follow the same like traditional beats and rhythms of a film. It yeah. follows the beats and rhythms of rap music. Kind of like Birdman with the drumming. Like the jazz yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Birdman is free. you haven't seen we we tried to I, I watched I watched a little bit of Birdman. It's not my kind of thing. Really? But the the drum yeah. like the drumming through that it has the rhythm. Yeah. And the same kind of thing is done in Eight Mile where it's like that is the that is the way the film is framed. It's a fantastic film. It is. Exhibit is in it. We discussed that a little bit last week. Yeah, Apparently, we it's not a cameo because he's a character. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not bitter about my loss. Thank you. Mark Riley, if you're listening, never come back to our show. <laughs> Mark, you're entirely welcome you're back a, on our you're show. You're welcome Jake's anytime. Bitter. I'm just very sad. I Next time you come... cameo if the character has a name. Like, I, think it, I think it could be. Maybe. We're not going back into this. Oh, this is a, it's that's a, it's a very a, good point. Depends how small the, the role it's is. It's a very small yeah. role. Anyway, anyway, Exhibit's in it. 
Um, it's got Mackay Pfeiffer, who's great in it. It's got Sam Wilson, the Falcon. Sam Wilson is Sam fantastic. Sam Wilson, who doesn't actually get the chance to rap. Yeah, because his real he name's chokes. Clarence. <laughs> That's a great moment. It's it like, is. This guy's a gangster. His real name's Clarence. It's, it's a wonderful moment. It, like, it's fantastic. Clarence's parents had a real good marriage. And that that final rap battle. Oh, it's crazy. Just just what is it about music films and building up to these crazy Crescendos, payoffs in the last yeah, music? It's got to have a That's a great metaphor. Yeah, yeah. actually, that is a crescendo. good point. Yeah. And then you get that satisfying moment of, yes, he did it. Yeah. Which in 8 Mile is when, spoiler alert, it's been out for 13 years. Get yeah. over it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so Sam, Sam Wilson's character just chokes. Yeah, he does. And he, it's he crazy. can't perform. And that, that moment is great. Like when it's like, because the film starts with B Rabbit not being able, he chokes and he can't formulate it. So it's nice to see the kind of like circular narrative. It's a very much a film about development. Yeah, it's like, a, it's a crazy good character prop. Although, if you've watched Honest Trailers, you'll know this. It does seem like Eminem has two emotions in that film. Yeah, none of them or all of them. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he goes from on oh, or yeah, off. You know, I'm I'm just doing my <laughs> act, and you know, I'll get through this film, and then suddenly it's like, ah, you know, he's angry and it's really aggressive. Yeah. So he's either zero or eleven. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Z- zero or eleven is the best way to say it. But. The performance is great. His emotions are a light like, switch. When he when he do when he gets to eleven, he's great. When he does the subtle kind of zero point, it's it's great. Like he's still a good performer, but the range isn't there. Like there's no middle ground. Mm. Which I'd like to see some more middle ground in the film. Yeah. Mm. But it's a really great film, is the point. It is, it is. Another great rap film. Straight out of Compton. Which Straight is a newer one. Which which came out the week before we started this show. Yeah. Or or two weeks or so before the show came out. What did we see like first? Late September, Marsh, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was you guys yeah. saw straight out of Compton first. Yeah, we did. It was the first <laughs> thing we got. <laughs> Thank when you. We yeah, came yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. So straight out of Compton, we've t- have we talked? Did we talk about it on the show? No, no, we haven't. I feel like we have. Nope, we have not. Are you sure we didn't talk about it during biopic week? We talked we about did. it during biopic. Yeah, week. we did. We did talk about it. <laughs> so you know that me and Connor are fans. Ignore me. And we I'm think the casting is great. Uh, but let's talk about the music in the film because that's kind of the point of yeah. this week. I mean, it's real music. It's it's yeah, music that it's was not music. composed specifically for the film. There is some. T- there is some of that. Yeah. There there is a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just one of those cases where like there's not a lot you can do as far as it is concerned because it's a biopic. It's a real story. Yeah. 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 There's not many but creative liberties to be taken. I think it's more about the like the occasions during that film where they choose to show us the performances of the songs. One hundred percent, yeah. Like, like the big the build up in Atlanta when they're told not to play F the Police, yeah, and then they do it. They do, and then yeah. there's gunshots. Like, you've heard clips and bits of of F the Police right the way up until yeah. this huge performance. Yeah, yeah. Like it, and that's another thing. What you're is saying that about cr- at the end? No, yeah. no, no. It's oh. it, it comes uh, no, in, it sorry, comes yeah. in uh, in like the, I would say the middle of Act Two. It's kind of dead center in the film. Maybe it is, it's yeah. the start of Act. No, because it's quite a long film. With it, it's, I'd say I start of Act Two. Start of Act Two. I don't know if it's necessarily got that kind of three act structure. Actually, no, it's not. It's like it's, a it's five act structure. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like there's a it, lot of it, stuff it, in it that. Chronicles film. such a big era. Yeah, but yeah, the interesting thing is like about that is it is like a it, like we've been saying with these music films that it's a crescendo to the film like, it is yeah it's bu- it builds up to that moment you get bits of f the police if all i around. if i had to equate because we're equating these films to music at the minute and the way they work i would equate this more to a piece of classical music where it's like <laughs> that's a very str- <laughs> no i get what you're saying because, but it, it, because it's if like, you haven't seen the film you won't get it's, that it's not necessarily like you have these big build-ups to clear payoffs it's just consistently thematic and, yeah. and and you you can never really anticipate or expect what's about to be shown like even though it's a biopic if you know the real stories of these people yeah it's just the way this film is structured makes it unconventional but in a very a, a very precise and calculated way and yeah it's, 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 it's a super it's a super good film the casting is amazing uh, Ice Cube's son looks more like Ice Cube than Ice Cube does, does. it's does. ridiculous it's like scary. I, it's like there was a picture of them sat- doing the interview where they're sat next to each other on a sofa. It's just like, which one is which? Which is which? Maybe is it the, the other way I can figure out is one, one of them looks slightly more wrinkly? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it. No, but that's it. It's a gr- it's, it's great casting. It like, is, And he's, yeah. a, he's, he only, does a really good job in, of playing his dad. The only drop in casting quality, I would say, was Snoop Dogg. Yeah, but he was in it for 10 it's seconds. Only a small, so. It's only a small thing. Like, get away but then again, even smaller than Snoop Dogg's role was Tupac's role. It was literally just, oh... That's Tupac in that room. Oh yeah, he was in the studio. <laughs> he was in the studio that. for yeah. all of about four <laughs> seconds. Yeah. But that was amazing visual casting. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, just great. 
It's just, it looked like young Tupac. It did look like Tupac. It was great. One last uh, music film. Yeah. That you wouldn't necessarily... I don't know if you're thinking of the same one I'm thinking of. I'm not, because I had another one that I wanted to bring up. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Oh, we should talk about that because it's one I of the songs that, that we're film. about to listen hmm? to at the I'm end of the segment. I'm extremely torn on that film. You're torn? Yeah. Really? I don't film? know. Like, it's good, but I don't think it's brilliant. I think it's. I think I enjoy it's pretty it, great. I've only Con- seen it. Once, it made but... if you if you are a fan of us, if you're subscribed to us on YouTube, you'll have seen Connor's top five video. Uh, make sure to watch some of our YouTube content because it's great. Um, as you know, the show's great too. Uh, so why would the YouTube be any different? But Connor, the top Scott, Scott Pilgrim came in at number four on your list. It did, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic at appropriating actual like actual modern music and like less modern music and like there's a lot of Beastie Boys in that film. It's just like it's it's one of those cases where they nailed the soundtrack. Like mm. if we're just talking about the soundtrack of it, they really yeah. it was just And also there's original music in there as well. There is original music in there. Like what was the song called? The uh, the first song they play in the film. They called it was <laughs> we're it, sad or something. Uh, launch Pad so sa- No, it's so sad. It's so sad. No, that was that was Oh um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about the intro song to the film. It's garbage it's, truck, but I don't think that's No, no, it's not song. garbage truck. That's for, that's later yeah, on. That's during the uh truck. No, I'm pretty sure that's No, go- dude, listen, believe me. <laughs> I watched the film Look, two bro. days ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Garbage truck is later on. Garbage truck is during the uh the fight with Oh my god, I'm blanking. Uh, oh the, my god the the first evil x no no yes 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 yeah <laughs> my apologies yeah because uh, before they go into the to the bridge the matthew patel breaks through the roof and that's his name matthew patel yeah. i was like oh, I, know, I, I, know, I was thinking I emo pirate for some reason because he yeah, looks yeah, like an emo like pirate emo that's pirate. exactly how they describe him in the film is just like what are you meant to be a pirate pirates are in this year <laughs> he had a good <laughs> start totally i liked it i really if that dude really flicks his hair one more time i'm gonna cry I honestly, we watched that in cinemas, and it totally that musical segment totally caught me off guard. I was like, yeah. "Is this a musical? What is this?" <laughs> yeah. like, I was really nervous. Like, this the doesn't the feel only right. Weak, the only weak bit, point kind of, of the fan, film, I guess, though, yeah, like, yeah. You know. The only weak point of the film, though, is immediately after that fight scene. It's it's the Matthew song. Yeah, it's the only weak point in the film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, I, I can't think of a weaker moment in the film. Because it's all pretty fantastic. And please mute oh, your I'm phones, so people. You're so unprofessional. I'm so sorry. Shocking I'm James keeping an eye so on our Twitter. At FFT underscore podcast. Our brand new Twitter account. Can't you can't be mad, mad because I turned it into a plug. Damn it. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, no, the, yeah. the actual film I wanted to talk about last uh, was Mr. Holland's Opus. But we don't really have time. Yeah, we don't. We've that. got to cut to our musical break. We do. Which, as if you're, if you're following us on Twitter, you will just have learned is uh, Endless Love. From the soundtrack from Happy Gilmore, which is great. So uh, be song. sure to tune back in uh, after this break, where we enter the battle royale. Ooh. That was Black Sheep by Metric from the soundtrack of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Welcome back to Film for Thought on Blast Media. <laughs> that's very, like, that's a very... Uh, aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're supposed to be aggressive. It's fighting time here. I think that was the cue. That was the, the cue for the... Uh, for the jingle game. Hello. I'd like to play a game with you. That is not the cue you agreed on, though. So no, I don't blame Katie for not getting that. <laughs> no, true. We literally said you would say, and now, and then you should lead into now? it, and you ruined it. But yeah, it's fighting time. Once again, you can uh, you can join the conversation on Twitter, at FFT underscore podcast, with the, uh, with the hashtag FFT on blast, if you so wish. Yeah, Once do again, it. Do it. we have our own thing now, so we do don't it. need the hashtag. It's just still kind of fun. So what's Battle Royale, Connor? Battle Royale, Jake. Did you say Battle Royale? I said Battle Royale. Okay. He said Battle. Oh, Thank you, Jake, Jay, for having you my are. back here. That's an immediate Catch point back, deducted from Jake. Uh, what? Thank you. I was so shocked, I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You fell out of your chair. Your chair fell out of your chair. My chair, chair fell out of itself. Your chair but fell out of you. Battle Royale, basically, each week we take our host representative. This week it's Jake. What up? And our guest representative, which this week is Jay Phillips. Hello. Hey. I'm glad we have such similar names. Jay, yeah, I know. Jay, so. That's why I had to put Jay's surname on there. Yeah. All right. But we take two questions and we sort of let them argue their points across as to the correct answer to those questions. Of course, and if, film is subjective. Of so course, we film get... subjective, which always makes things interesting. It's more about who presents the better argument. Why can't everyone be a winner? We're all that's winners, not how really. competitions Except work, Jay. Except for last week I'm where I was destroyed you by were. the president of Blast. It so. was like that one scene from Batman where Batman. Bane picks him up and just 
breaks yeah, his back over back. his knee. Was, I will it break you. He doesn't say I will break you. He doesn't film, does he? say I will That's break sad. you, which is a shame because I want to hear you know proper Mexican Bane say I will break so you. So what's our first round? So you got so you got to do the thing. I realise you didn't do this last round. So when you say round one, Katie does a little ding. Yeah. I just want to make that clear so that you get it right. Okay. Speak, okay. So just to be clear, I say round one. Okay, and we got it. That. Okay, okay, so let's do it now okay, for real. That was a test. Let's that was, do the that real was a test run. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, in that case, round one. <laughs> That's better. This is tense. I like it. <laughs> this is tense. It's great. Okay, so round one is out and don't you don't have to do it again. Uh, <laughs> best explosion in a film. Ooh. Okay. So, and we're going to go to Jay Phillips first. Yeah, the way it uh, works is guest goes first. Oh, brilliant. You have the floor. Well, I've been thinking about it. And I should good, hope good. so. Yeah, yeah, good. That's it's a good a great start. start. There's this one bit in Mad Max Fury Road. And there's, there's this one car chase. You know the car chase. Yeah. No, the whole film's a car it, chase. Yeah, you haven't no. seen it? Yeah. No, I haven't Well, seen it's basically a long car chase and there's a lot of explosions. Mm-hmm. There's this one bit when there's this limo, right? And it's been customised to have all these gas cans fitted onto it. And it's driving through the wasteland. And they're like, Mad Max is like beating up the guy inside of it. He's like this sort of mutated guy who's like lost his nose for some reason. And he's like beating up this guy. And he like knocks him out, puts his giant mutated foot on the pedal, climbs out the window. And then this guy comes down on this pole, like swinging. Have you ever seen those circus performers that like swing around those poles? That, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. that, yeah. and th- one of those guys swings down, and like Mad Max grabs onto him, and they go swinging up, and like he stabs the guy, and he falls off. Where's and the explosion? <laughs> and as he, I've, I've drawn it here on, on, this, pa- on this pad of paper. I have. Jay's brought. Jay has with brought me. handwritten notes, hand doodles, and doodles. As well. and doodles, visual cues to a radio show. Jay, <laughs> <laughs> did you I'm think about that one? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like, good job, Jay. He's on this pole, and like after he stabs the mutant war boy dude on the pole and throws him off he goes back up and after he and like as he goes up the limo with all the gas cans he was just in explodes and there's this massive explosion like 50 foot high and he just sort of glides by it on this pole really slowly and majestically like and he he sort of like flinches a bit and turns around just sort of watches this limo go up in flames and as this is happening there's this massive truck with all these like speakers on it and there's this dude this mutant he's hanging off the front of it by bungee cords shredding away with the flame for a guitar and that is the best explosion I've ever seen that it, is, sounds, it is a spectacle that sounds pretty incredible it is, it is a spectacle yeah. would you like but, to see my drawing yeah sure <laughs> Here, have a look at my drawing okay oh that really paints the picture show it to the camera show it to the camera yeah so we've got a camera in- we, we have a camera sometimes so this is an interesting I'll part see, for the audio. I'll zoom in in hand. Can I, can I see that picture, please? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to... Let's just hand Jay's notebook around. We'll go to Jake while I quickly inspect Jay's notebook. So I appreciate the theatrics of that explosion, Jay, but I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Oh, okay. Um, The best film explosion is from The Dark Knight. Go on. Uh, I'll set the scene, shall I? Sorry, just quickly. That's a really good drawing. Yeah, it's a really good drawing. Man. Oh, we've lost your page. Sorry. That's oh, fine. <laughs> um... The best movie explosion is from The Dark Knight. I'll set the scene. Uh, the Joker has infiltrated a, uh, a hospital. This where is Harvey, built to. Where Harvey Dent is staying. Um, we're staying. <laughs> like, it's a hotel. He's, he's you know, injured. He's there. Uh, he's, he's hospitalized. Had, had he's just had an explosion. Um, so, basically, what happens is the hospital gets evacuated. And Joker says, do you know what? I'm going to blow it up. And so... As he's walking out of the hospital, you've got this huge epic shot behind it. He presses his detonator. One solitary explosion. Not very impressive, right? But the wonderful thing about this explosion is that this is not planned. Nothing about what I'm about to explain is planned. So one one of the explosions one of the explosions goes off. But then behind the scenes, technically the rest of the explosions don't go off like they stop working they're having trouble detonating them so Heath Ledger in his amazing infinite improvisational wisdom starts bashing on his thing he's you know he's totally in character he's he trying to make as well, he? He goes, yeah he's like he like he throws his arms up he's confused he's bashing on the controller and then suddenly boom massive explosion the whole hospital erupts and Heath Ledger as the Joker looks just about as surprised as everyone else it's an amazing moment. 
uh, it's it's one of those rare pieces of like he's dressed as a nurse while he's doing. He this is as well. dressed as a nurse, and that, that helps. Of... Obviously, that helps the whole atmosphere just be ridiculous. Do you he's know... confused. Uh, I'll let, I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's he's confused. It's just it's just this wonderful moment of like this excellent unplanned beautiful moment that could have only ever happened at that one point which is why i think it's the best movie explosion because it, it could never be replicated you could never have that moment whereas i'm sorry to say as wonderful and choreographed as the as your explosion is it is exactly that it's choreographed it, it's slick it's but, smooth but at the same time it's choreographed but it's cool they were driving around what 20 trucks beat up old trucks they found lying around nambia or where was it I can't remember what. Yeah, they, Africa, they just found the a bunch of trucks. They found them, welded them together, got all these Australians into them, and like, all these Australians just driving through the desert. And <laughs> this is all really happening. All right, mate. I just want to point yeah, out, Tom they Hardy. did have a statistical advantage by putting a bunch of uh, of Australians in the desert and telling them to make <laughs> things blow up. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> that seems like something that's not going to be too difficult. This, it's just... <laughs> sure, your, your thing, did, did the explosions actually happen? In... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they so actually so blew up a building. Okay. Like they physically they bought they a, building had a building to blow up, right? And they blew it up. You had a hospital sitting there, like a box or whatever, something that sits there. Yeah. And like these guys were driving through the desert in war rigs. <laughs> so because your explosion is moving, it's better. Going through there, <laughs> and not only are the trucks moving, but Tom Hardy is on a crane flying past the camera on a stick. But here's the thing: you have in 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 my moment, you have this wonderful improv moment that you could never you could never capture you, it again do you know what happens when he gets onto the bus there happens was a cut shot the bus. Huh? there was a cut shot from the film uh, he gets no, well the no bus. if it's been cut i don't i couldn't tell you it's in this in the behind the scenes watch it all right um basically he gets onto the bus and he sits and he grabs onto the, the the rail on the chair in front of him in the bus and he sits there and he licks his lip and he's and he's jittering as the uh as, as the, the bus is driving away and the buildings explode in the background. And this is a real explosion and he's not twitching or yeah, failing the shot. Is, this is part of the thing is like, yeah, he, he, you have to remember Heath Ledger it was an actor, you know? He, so is Tom when, Hardy. No, I know, well, but like, you've got to think like, Tom Hardy expected that to happen in the way that it did. Heath Ledger plays True, off this but... amazing moment that it could have only ever happened once and it's oh, the only reason it's such a successful moment is because of how wonderful he was in that role. He captured the essence of the role. He never fell out of the role. It's just Do a beautiful you moment how difficult of acting. It is to choreograph something while it's moving, like trucks I will, rolling through the I will desert recognize in the, the wilderness. Technical, I will recognise the technical greatness behind your shot. I'm not I'm not un I'm not underselling Mad Max. I've seen the trailers, it looks phenomenal like i'll get around to watching it eventually but connor you can't deny the best explosion in cinema history is the one that is the most iconic no, connor, I feel like the you can't deny i mean neither of you picked the actual like ballet this neither of like you ballet. picked the actual best explosion in so cinema connor history. connor came before the show he was like why didn't neither of you pick the death star and you I missed like, a few good oh, ones actually, actually. I, I was i was thinking about the death star actually you've got you said yeah, you've got a fact I, I found about out the there are two star. different death star explosions the original one was just a little yeah, it's like a and in the extended edition, yeah, there's the a shock wave. And... It's like the huge explosion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only good thing in the remastered version. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty intense. Yeah, but you also missed a bunch of other really good explosions. I would have, ex I would have accepted. <laughs> you would have <laughs> you accepted. Would have I, I would have, I would have accepted Doctor Strange Love. Mm. Yeah. Where he rides the rides the nuke down wave in a cowboy hat. Yeah, that's pretty that's, good. Yeah, that's, that's crazy good. Uh, I would have accepted. Uh, the asteroid in Armageddon being split in yeah, half. Yeah, another one that I considered, which probably I it, I feel like the one I almost picked would have been too like I wanted it to be a debate, and we've got a good debate. That was pretty good. Got fire. Yep. Got like fiery. well done, and well done me for not crumbling like I did <laughs> yep. last week. Um, under the you're getting better Martin at this. Mark. Yeah. Um, the one I almost picked was the White House explosion from Independence Day. That was literally the next one I was going to mention. That's yeah. a pretty like I feel like that's that's like picking that's like saying. Who would win, which superhero is the strongest? It's like the Doctor Manhattan. It's like it's it's so good you can't pick it because it's yeah. just not fair, yeah. right? I think that's I think that's fair. To say. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, f final closing argument. I guess you could never have that moment in another film okay. with another actor. It would just be it's it, it's this beautiful moment in cinema that is right. it's just True, captured. But it's, your explosion was stationary. It was just he pressing a button. But Jay. He's doing it. He's doing it. Do I what? want a closing statement from you, not another retort. <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh. This Come explosion on, was like ballet. It's beautifully choreographed. And it's just gorgeous. It's pretty. 
It's, it's slow pace. It's pretty background. with it's a pretty. flamethrower guitar. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. The Doof Warrior. He's okay, a, I, I will keep those arguments into consideration. So the way this show, this this part of the show works is we don't reveal the winners until after the show. And no, genuinely, we, we normally have a sense of who probably won. <laughs> I have no idea. This yeah, I'm struggling with this one. one. You're going to have to give me a minute. Yeah, well, you've got the whole next round to think about it. Oh, God. Right. Connor, Sorry, yeah, we were just sort of debating between the two of us who who won that one. Right. Oh, were you? (laughs) Yeah. So, um, round two. (laughs) Katie, uh, could I go first? I need you to queue up the thing that I gave you. Yeah, um, Jake brought material resources this week, as did Mark last week. Jake Jake stepped up his game in response. I'm taking... uh, Jake, where is it? Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. there, there it is. We found it. We I'm found taking it. a cue from Marky Mark, who brought sound effects for his own thing. So, anyway, ask the question, because you haven't done that yet. So, the question for round two. Because this is this is relevant because of what's going on in the news recently. What's happening? Yeah, the kind of... The, the, the recent got, like, the resurgence in the genre. Trailer, the what, in your opinion, prior to this year, mm-hmm. is the best film adaptation... Of a video game. Oh God! <laughs> now that that's going to be a difficult one because, as we all know, they're, they're garbage. Pre- they're pretty garbage. But they're all bad. Of, oh, sorry. I'm going to go ahead because I know that you yeah. come to me on this one because Jay started. You started the last round. You did. Very strong round, opening yeah. argument. Uh, so the best video game for now. I should. I want to. Pre- I want to preface this by saying, video game films are garbage. So I recalibrated this question in my own head. I said, look, I cannot honestly say that any film a video game film is good so i went with what is the most fun to watch and the answer was what an amazing theme tune it is a a crazy how can how could anyone argue with me like listen to that how fun is that like this film is so wait, okay, we need to put it over the top. We want to archive this. We're not going to be able to get, yeah, the, we'll get yeah. copyright track. But okay, I can I'm see so the excited. energy in I your. Love, in I your love face. the Mortal Kombat film. It came out in 1995. It's got an amazing cast. It's, it's just it's ridiculous fun. It's so fun. He's I'll run you through some his stuff. levels. I, just, he's like I, it's so fun. I'll, I'll run you through some some of the selling points. So it came out in 1995, which means the special effects are garbage because it was <laughs> a low budget film. Any these any are the film selling points. No, these are these are, these are why I think it's a, this is why I think this is the best film. It's the most fun. Well, not film the best, the lesser of all the evils. And yeah, yeah, the less the lesser of all. Yeah, the the the, the garbage that's out there. Okay. So Mortal Kombat 1995, terrible graphics. You've got a horrible. I can't remember if it was CGI or stop motion or a man in a suit. You've got Goro. It was a man in a suit. Arm. Yeah, it's a man in a suit. It looks terrible. It looks terrible. In this cast, you have Carrie Hiro. Hi- 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 ah, I knew I was going to get this. Do you want me? A- no, Carrie Hiro. Yo- uh, ha- oh fuck! Do you, do you, you really? Do you want Kari me to do it? Carrie Hiro Yuki Tagawa, who L- you would let me check you. you I need him. to check you. Um, he he is he is an amazing Asian actor. He played Shang Tsung, the villain of this, the the kind of master of this. Uh, I nailed the pronunciation Hiro right. Yuki eventually, T- Tagawa is correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah you sure. are correct. But anyway. It's so good, right? Yeah. It's just he he's an amazing actor, he's amazing in it. Uh the whole the whole thing is just ridiculously fun. Um I, I have a great time watching it and I feel like that's all I can look for, unfortunately, in these in these films. The quality is terrible, right? The quality of video yeah. gaming films are just are ju- it's just not great. It's so not good, no. When I'm thinking what's the best one, I'm thinking what is the one I can sit through and have a good time. Because there are other ones that I can sit through and be miserable. I could watch the Super Mario movie, and it's garbage, God, and I don't funny. enjoy watching that garbage. I could watch people who enjoy that film in you know, irony. I can watch the like the, we're taking a break from the battle for a second. People who enjoy the Super Mario Brothers film through irony and say, "Oh, it's actually legitimately good because no. it's this ironically bad." No, film. no it's one of those <laughs> cases where it's just bad. It's just bad. There is nothing it's about awful. enjoyable about it in irony. It's not even like you can use it as a resource or as a measurement. As to how not to do something, it's just not enjoyable to it's sit through. Poor film. Anyway, I've gushed a little bit, so I'll yep. let you get into your um... <laughs> right. <laughs> Jay, you're statement, think, please. I had to do a lot of consideration for this because it is hard it coming is. up with something. That's I've got. I, I thought Tomb Raider, yeah. god awful, but yeah, at the same time goofy. You know, fighting a yeah, robot at the start that was kind of fun. Yeah. Hitman, yep. I just written bad. 
just, it's just a poor <laughs> just, film. Just bad. Just bad. Yeah, Hitman, Prince bad. of Persia. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, wasn't it? And Jake, Prince of Persia. Yeah, so Prince casting, of Persia. Casting a... Um, Guy of American and Swedish, yeah. Swedish Jake descent, Gilmore, the of not Persian. Persia. Yeah, we're, you know, if we're, racist if you, garbage. We talked a little bit we a have talked, ago about uh, whitewashing of cinema. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good this is a pretty good example. So I'm just disregarding those three. I thought the best, well, the least garbage video game movie has to be the Resident Evil films. They are bad. I will, I will get on the level. <laughs> I love this round. I love this round, and I'll tell you why I love this round because we're fighting for the best film <laughs> in the genre. And we're like, is they are bad. Let just, me elaborate. They're, just they're extremely terrible. poor films. <laughs> like Mila Mila Jovovich, she's not good. Yeah. she's just not good in them. But like, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> they're really, really bad. But. They don't ruin the... Well, okay. okay. <laughs> no, Resident they do. Evil is bad. They ruin no, no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> they manage to divulge far away from Resident Evil that they don't ruin it too much. You can still play the Resi games without thinking of those terrible True. Miloš Jovovich series. <laughs> series films. Oh, God. <laughs> but, like... Can, can, we, can we hear a bit about the uh, the visual effects in that? Because a, a big strong point of Jake's was the visuals. Oh, the there's film. this one bit when there's this that, there's like a grid yeah, of but lasers, for the wrong isn't there? I think I think there's a bit when someone goes through a grid of lasers and they get cut up by it. It's yep. terrible. <laughs> the, th- the third I love one. That this is a qualifying. It's like, like which is the most the bad. The third good? one kind of redeems it because it divulges Ooh. so which far one, away. Which from one Resident is Evil. the one where They're there's something the on the ceiling that then starts eating people? First one, I think. First one. Right. Yeah. But like, they. They haven't ruined the original Resident Evil. I think that remains... Well, to be honest, thinking now, Resident Evil is kind of a terrible, goofy series. You know, something, something, you almost made me a Jill sandwich, that sort of thing. Yeah. But these films don't completely ruin them. Okay. These, okay, we're we coming back to me because Jake. I've been preparing while Jake... We're coming right, back to, we're coming on, back to Jake for a retort. Jake. I, I feel dead right now. Here's, sorry. Here, here is my retort, and I need no other retort than this. Where the hell are we? Do I look like your travel agent? These are quotes. Yeah. While you're at it, why don't you call my agent? Do I look like your secretary? This is dialogue. Oh this is God. dialogue from the film. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Jax to Sonya Blade. Uh, trust me, Sonya. I only trust one person, Jax. And you're talking to her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wait, are you ready for some serious misogyny? You know, you got to admire her when she sets her mind on something. It's not your mind. <laughs> it's not oh her mind God. you're admi- admiring. Johnny Gage goes, it's true. And this is, these are two of my, f- I mean, obviously they quote the games, you know, you got the flawless victory. Uh, yep. Uh, finish him. Yep. Iconic, great moments in gaming translated to the screen in this awful mess of a film yep. that, by the way, is a drinking game. It's, no, it's nothing more than a drinking game. <laughs> it really game. is. Like, this this film is just a drinking game. Go into it drinking. And come out of it drinking. Oh, my favourite. <laughs> just drink. Favorite. Just drink, guys. Just drink. Just drink Alcohol for, all the time. Drink to forget. Let's hope um, that no kids are watching this. Oh, yeah. No, if you, if, you are, don't drink. if you are under the appropriate legal drinking age for wherever it is you live, do not drink. Well, don't let your Unless parents know you drink. But anyway, Jake. Unless you're watching Mortal Kombat. Unless you drink. <laughs> Jake. Um, my final quote, which will be the end of my rebuttal, because this is, I mean, this is a line. You. This is Luke Hank. You can look into my soul, but you don't own it. How badass is that? That's awful. Right? These are amazing quotes. These great moments in in this ridiculously bad film that is just cheesy and over the top, and it's phenomenal. These are and the I kinds love... of quotes you okay. would get if you went back and tried to make an over the top eighties. Exactly. This is the thing. You know, this Kung is, Fury like, came yeah, out. Kung Fury. Kung Fury came out, and it was emulate. I'm sorry, Jay. I'm I'm gushing. Uh, like it emulated this era of filmmaking. Admittedly. It, the Kung Fury era of filmmaking was like the 80s VHS. Yeah. This is 1995. It should be better, but yeah. it's not. And this is the wonderful selling point yeah. of this film is that it's just, it's so bad and it shouldn't be. And it's got this amazing source material with this amazing lore. And I think the fact that it's so bad, like so unbelievably bad to the point where it's stupid. It's like the room. You can watch the room and have fun watching the room because you're like, ah, oh, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. You get to quote along. It's this ridiculous sh- just show of j- ridiculousness. And that's why Mortal Kombat's better. Right. I'm just going to leave it with video game movies are inherently terrible. And the fact that the Resident Evil films are so forgettable and so bland 
That's why they're the best video game films. Because <laughs> you don't, you don't have to think and about it. And that is my rebuttal. Well. <laughs> I love that. He That's actually a really good point. He just slammed I'm his done butt here. shut. <laughs> okay. Mic drop. Okay, yeah. sure. I suppose, in a sense, like, yeah, you've got that strength of, like, you know, you can forget that the Resident Evil films existed and that's why they're so good. But here's the thing. You will never forget the wonder of sitting down and watching Mortal Kombat. I want to watch Maybe the Mortal Kombat film. How you badly know. do you want to watch yeah, it with I kind of want it now. Right? It's been a while since I watched Okay. It. I think that's it. That's all we have to say, yeah? I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I I'm appreciate it. Neither of you. I forgot that we had that yeah. buzzer and it totally <laughs> scared me. <laughs> you were kind of deer in headlights right there, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, it was pretty terrifying. So... This is a tough week. No, I, no, it's not. I feel like it's, it's a painful a week. week. Yeah. Was, it's a painful week. It is. It's a painful week. I have to give both rounds to Jake. What? Unbelievable. And this is Thank shocking you. for a few reasons because, this firstly, is the first time. you had some you had some great points. Wait, right. it's not. Wait, it's, it's the first time I've won. Yeah, it's the first time you've won. Wow. Jake, yeah, okay, Jake. Jake. Oh, I was really sure I was going Jake, to go three. You won with Mortal Kombat. <laughs> did you win there or did you lose? No ba- Come Wait, on. Flawless victory. That's what I was going to say. That's the thing from the film. Okay. I. Yeah. I, I've got to say, <laughs> it does pain me to give both points to Jake because, firstly, I don't trust like me, Jake. He's really right? angry about the fact that he I had can to see. make me win. It's just. Can we play it again? No. The first, the first round, Jay, was very, very close. I almost did give it to you, but yeah, this, I mean that was a tough round. It, it was, was a tough round. It was a very good choice, but it was arguing. Wait, to be honest, it was it was arguing the spectacle and the choreography Wait. and the skill right. versus. It was choreographed really well. Yeah, it like was. Jake's, it was incredible. You had a well, good the call thing. there, Jay. Here's where you fell down. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> no, you're finished. <laughs> finish, finish him. him. <laughs> Are you okay, Jake? Oh, dude, I have so much This is your first now. point. This I'm is your just first glad point. We're ba- like, so what's the score now? The Ho- score now is has- team guests three points, yep. team hosts two points. <laughs> we're catching up. We have High five me. we have three weeks to get it back before the big blowout extravaganza. Oh God, we need to get organised. We do. That. We do. We're doing a big live event, Ooh. all battle royale, and you're gonna be there. You're gonna be I there because we're gonna get oh, as many like team guests team. back yeah, as we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. We're getting as many team guest members back as we can. I blew out my throat. You did. You did. <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad I won with Mortal Kombat. Yeah, the second round was a. Or deeply the disgusted? second, the second round was, I'm and forgive so... my joke, a flawless victory. Yeah. Like. He really, he really did nail it on that one. Yeah. I, look, to be I'm, honest, it was a difficult question. It was it's difficult. A really I, I was question. just sitting there earlier, like just thinking. Like, there is nothing I want to defend. Nothing. Except for Mortal Kombat. And with that, the show is over. It is over. So thank you for joining us this week, not guys. A it's been a, it's been a lovely week. We've been. He was talking to the audience, not you. Oh. I am thankful that Jay has joined us, though. <laughs> but Jay. you, you get your thanks in the outro. Hey. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Jay, you were lovely. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thanks for spending time with us and talking about films. Awesome. It was awesome to have you. Thank here. you for having me. Once again, you can join us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, yep. Twitter at FFT underscore podcast on mm-hmm. our new, brand new, shiny, shiny Twitter handle. If you want to get on our Facebook, you just search Film for Thought and it's the, you're looking for the little blue... You are looking for the blue... Blue camera, white camera, blue background. No, <laughs> white, white camera, camera, blue background. Blue background. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> if you missed any of the show, you can catch up tomorrow on YouTube, Saturday... 6 p.m. If I get it up in time. If he gets it up in time. <laughs> so, for uh, now, guys, uh, we've appreciated you being here. Oh, We're going to play it. you out to the sounds of Magic by Pilot. From the Magic what an amazing song. Well, finally, we talked about the Magic Roundabout so much on this show, yeah, and I now know, right? we get it's, to enjoy the music. finally got it, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye.